Hello dear chess friends, I'm international master Andrei Ostrovsky and this lesson is dedicated to the tactical patterns that every chess player must know. So if you will master these tactical patterns, most likely you will master much more complicated things in chess. So we start with this interesting position and you should know that in general all the possible tactics uh, usually based on vulnerabilities in opponent's camp. So actually not protected or not enough protected pieces and pawns. So let's try to understand Black's main vulnerabilities here. So we can easily identify the pieces that are not protected at the moment. They are bishop on c4, the knight on c6, and also uh, we can probably notice the pawn g7, which is protected by only one piece, by the king. So it is definitely not enough because this pawn is already under serious pressure. So we can notice that the knight exerts this pressure and the bishop b2 also attacks this pawn. So how to combine probably this vulnerabilities into one complex and to try to use several of them to win the material. So white has a really cool move. It is uh, queen to c3. And after this move, black is in trouble because now g7 is attacked three times with the knight, with the queen and with the bishop. It is actually enough to attack it with only queen and the knight because there is a threat of a checkmate on g7 now. So if uh, white's queen gets to uh, g7, it will be checkmate. At the same time, the queen, as we can see, attacks the bishop. So bishop c4, which we already discussed was the vulnerable piece, not protected piece, is now under attack and white can capture this guy next move if uh, checkmate will be prevented. This pattern is called the double attack, which means that white attacks two objects simultaneously. And the problem is that black can make only one move in the response, and uh, in many cases it is not uh, possible simply uh, to find the move that will cover both hanging objects, like here. So there is simply no move protecting both the bishop and the g7 pawn at first glance. So if black prevents the checkmate, then white takes the bishop, for example, in case of uh, f6. So this move prevents the checkmate, but bishop is still hanging, so white captures it. And by the way, it is another double attack. So the king is under attack, and now another object that was vulnerable, the knight is also under attack. If here bishop goes away somewhere, then queen takes on g7 with the checkmate. However, black has an interest in defense. So it is queen to b4. Very interesting move. And why it is uh, so great? Because now the bishop is protected. And at the same time, we can see that queen can't take on g7. It is not possible because of the pin. So the queen on b4, as we can see, pins the queen to the king e1. And it is the absolute pin, which means that the queen simply can't go away from this diagonal uh, according to the rules of chess. So this stops white from delivering a checkmate or taking the bishop on c4. But uh, let's try to understand why queen b4 was possible because of the knight c6. So knight c6 is the only piece that makes this defense possible because the knight protects the queen. So if, let's say, white takes the queen, then knight takes the queen and white achieved nothing. It is just an exchange. So in such a situation, it is very important to understand if it is possible to get rid of the knight somehow, because if there is no knight on c6, white simply grabs the queen, right? And here comes another interesting pattern, uh, worth remembering, uh, so-called removing the defender. So if we manage to remove the knight c6 somehow, to force the knight moving away from c6, in other words, then we will benefit capturing the queen. And white has such a move. It is knight to e7. Another great decision that leads to uh, immediate disaster in Black's camp. So why it is so great? It is check. Black has no time for capturing White's queen, for example. So Black has to deal with check, first of all. At the same time, the knight attacks the knight c6, 
So it is another well-known pattern, uh, which is called fork. It is actually uh, the same like the double attack. So with one move, the knight attacks two objects, the king and opponent's piece. And appears that this knight is invulnerable on e7. Because if, for example, uh, knight takes e7, then as we discussed before, queen takes queen and white wins. Because white sacrificed only one knight, but won the queen, the main piece in chess. If queen takes on e7, then black loses his pin along diagonal a5, e1, which makes queen free, and white wins the game with the help of queen takes g7, the checkmate. And finally, if king goes away somewhere, for example, on h7, then white can capture the knight on c6, winning the minor piece and uh, gradually winning the game with the extra material. So here we saw different tactical patterns. Almost all important patterns uh, happened in this example. So first double attack, then the pin, rather like a defendant tool. But anyway, the pin is one of the most important tactical patterns in chess. Then knight e7, which is the fork and at the same time the tool of removing the defender, the knight c6. And queen b4 is actually an indirect defender of the g7. So without the queen on b4, g7 drops and it will be a checkmate. So with the help of knight e7, white tries to remove both the queen or opponent's knight. In both cases, white benefits seriously. In this position, we can notice an interesting feature. So the king and the rook are placed on the same diagonal. This diagonal is open and black has a dark screwed bishop uh, that can actually occupy this diagonal. So it is usually the sign of a possibility of using the pin as an attacking tool. So here bishop goes to d4, the best move for sure, attacking the rook and pinning this rook to the king. So it is again an absolute pin, so the rook can't go away from this diagonal. In other words, this rook can't move at all. By the way, we can also notice very active bishop on h3 and the rook on f8, both controlling f1 square. This means that uh, rook d1, uh, which at first glance can take the bishop, can't really do this because if rook takes d4, then rook f8 goes to f1 and it is a checkmate. So bishop d4 is not only the pin, but uh, at the same time, they try to remove the defender of the first rank. So as we can see, defenders mean uh, many different things. So they are not only defenders of other pieces or pawns, they could be great defenders of some key squares. So in some cases, it is really important to try to remove defenders of those squares to get the access to those squares. So after bishop d4, uh, black has a direct threat of just uh, taking the rook on e3. Uh, rook e1 move uh, doesn't help because of the same problem with the f1 square. So bishop takes e3. And if rook takes e3, then rook goes to f1 with the checkmate. So after bishop d4, if white wants to save the material balance, it is necessary to protect the rook with the help of knight g2. And this move appears quite tricky, because at first glance, black can benefit simply removing this defender. So in other words, just taking the knight. But this move will be a serious mistake, because in this case, the bishop on g2 becomes vulnerable, and uh, white can take on d4 instead of uh, taking on g2, losing the rook on e3. And now black's basic refutation of this capture, I mean rook to f1 with the checkmate, fails because it is not a checkmate since the king can take the bishop. So instead of doing this bishop takes g2, black has to save this great bishop d4 that pins the rook first. So bishop goes away, for example, to c5. And now black has this threat of just taking the knight and then taking the rook and as a result black will have an extra minor piece. So now white has to protect the rook one more time, otherwise white simply loses because of the main defender going away from the board. So rook goes to e1 protecting the rook, but black increases pressure here 
place rook to f3 and now unfortunately white has no chance to save the material because if king goes away let's say just unpinning the rook uh, black implements the main idea of removing the defender here so bishop takes g2 king takes g2 it was checked so it was forced and now rook takes e3 with the extra minor piece so here black managed to win the game with the help of two tactical patterns so the pin and removing the defender in different forms so first of all like here because rook can't take d4 because of rook f1 and then in this form of just capturing the knight the main defender and winning another piece in opponent's camp as we discussed in the previous example sometimes uh, defenders actually defend important squares so not only other pieces and pawns so in this position the most tempting object of attack is of course opponent's king because it is seriously limited with own pieces so it is surrounded by the rook by the pawn so there are no squares to occupy with the king because we also have this great active bishop uh, controlling g7 square and this means that almost any attack against this king might be decisive so it might lead to a checkmate we can also notice very active knight somewhere around and it would be very nice if this knight can jump to f7 let's say because it will be check and since the king has no squares to go away it uh, could be a checkmate but at the moment we can see that the queen e7 protects this very important point f7 so uh, there is an idea of uh, removing this defender we can also notice uh, we can diagonal a1 h8 in black's position because black already played g6 which means if the king attacked along this diagonal it is not that easy to protect it and uh, there is a possibility of playing queen e5 so if black's queen takes our queen then it loses the control over f7 and it will be a checkmate after knight takes f7 but uh, immediate queen e5 is not possible because this square is also protected by another piece it is the knight so white starts with rook c6 just removing the first defender removing the defender of the square e5 key square after black takes otherwise actually uh, white simply has extra knight for no compensation queen e5 becomes possible so now queen goes to e5 another interesting sacrifice another good looking tactical thing so it is check and it is at the same time the attack against the queen so double attack once again so if black let's say plays f6 protecting the king then queen takes queen winning the game and if queen takes queen then white managed to eliminate uh, main defenders of the king and now the knight simply takes on f7 with check it is also an attack against the queen but in this particular case it doesn't really matter because the checkmate is much more important thing in chess it is actually the main goal but uh, in any other case for example imagine that there is no rook on g8 and the king can move it might be the motive of the fork with the knight the motive of the double attack and uh, white could have won some material with the help of this knight of seven check in this position we can notice that white already has the material advantage so white at the moment has the extra minor piece uh, extra knight so at first glance uh, black is in a serious trouble because white also attacks so uh, there is a threat of taking on d7 for instance if black plays something like bishop g7 continuing the development white can capture on d7 and after rook takes d7 the rook is pinned as we can see so queen pins the rook to the king it can't move and rook goes to b8 with the checkmate because the king simply has no squares to go away and the rook is pinned so it can't help so it is the main threat it is not possible for example to take the bishop because in this case queen takes on c6 with check and we deal with the same pattern so rook d7 and uh, rook goes to b8 with the checkmate but here comes another very important tactical pattern it is called the discovered attack and one of the most dangerous versions of the discovered attack is a discovered check so black starts with queen d3 move by the way this move can uh, come 
to your mind easily after analysis of the position. Again, understanding White's main vulnerabilities like the Rook on B1, which is not protected, and the King on E2, which is a very tempting object of attack in general. So uh, Queen D3 is a double attack against the King and the Rook, and it is possible because if uh, king takes d3, then black can play bishop takes c6. So now this move makes sense because it is not only the capture of the bishop, not only the attack against the queen, but at the same time, this move discovers the rook d8, which now attacks the king. So it is a so-called discovered check. So one piece goes away, reveals another piece that attacks the king and the point is that uh, in such a situation this piece which goes away can occupy different squares that could have been not possible to occupy in any other situation because opponent simply has to deal with check first and only then with other threats like here. So the threat of taking the queen is one thing but the check is the priority and uh, it is not possible here to save the king and the queen simultaneously so if queen goes to d4 for example you can still take this queen and you are all right and uh, if king goes away somewhere then bishop simply takes the queen and we can notice that with the help of this uh, little combination black managed to regain the missing material and now black has even the extra pawn so if after queen d3 for example the king goes away somewhere and uh, actually it is only one square possible to occupy if not taking the queen in this case queen takes rook so black wins the rook and at the moment black has um, extra exchange so the main problem with the rook b8 checkmate is eliminated and after bishop d7 rook d7 everything is all right so white has no sufficient compensation for missing material white has no serious threats to cause black problems the previous example showed the great power of the discovery check and as i said before the discovery check is the case of the more general idea of the discovered attack so once again everything is based on vulnerable pieces vulnerable pawns uh, vulnerable objects in opponent's camp so even in such a position that you now can see on the board when everything looks just uh, very good protected in opponent's camp you can still find some vulnerabilities for example the queen on c7 is probably the only piece that is not protected at the moment and white can use it with the help of uh, discovered attack so first of all white takes on h6 so this move should be considered because white as we can see attacks on the king side so almost all pieces are directed towards the king side and this moves like bishop h6 usually lead to opening some files on the sides uh, which might be very useful because this makes the opponent's king exposed to further checks and attacks so you have to consider these moves and in this particular case it helps white to win so if black doesn't take the bishop then white simply grab the pawn very nice so white already wants some material and if black takes the bishop this opens up the g file so queen can attack the king now and black is in trouble because if uh, king goes to the corner of the board then white simply takes on f7 with knight it is not actually the uh, fork trying to get the rook it is already a checkmate because the king is attacked and g file is controlled as well as h7 square which is controlled by the bishop so the king simply has no moves to go away so after queen g3, uh, the only normal, the only sensible move at first glance is king f8. But here we can notice that the queen already exerts indirect pressure on opponent's queen, which is not protected. And the only piece that uh, actually interferes with the simple capture of the queen is the knight e5. And here white comes up with the discovered attack. So knight jumps to g6. It is a tempo move uh, attacking the king and at the same time the queen attacks queen and uh, black has no defense because the priority is check so black has to deal with check and after f takes g6 queen takes queen so as a result we can notice that white sacrificed two minor pieces instead white actually grabbed the queen so the main piece and of course white has a decisive material advantage
So we discussed uh, the most known tactical pairs. They are double attack, fork, pin, removing the defender and discovered attack. We also noticed that sometimes they are combined. It is a common situation. And the core of all the tactics is uh, vulnerabilities in opponent's camp. So the pieces, pawns or squares that are not protected or protected not enough. So you have, first of all, to understand the value of this information. Then you have to train to identify these vulnerabilities in opponent's camp. And of course, it will be very useful if you will memorize this very basic tactical patterns. It will seriously help you to master the tactics and the chess in general. Thanks a lot for your attention. See you next lessons.